Hello and welcome to Emma Reads Reddit. Today I'm reading from r slash ask reddit. But first, let's play r slash drunk or a kid, where I give you a real life scenario and you guess whether it was drunk or a kid. This one was posted by Flower Bitch. Got extremely comfortable sitting in an alcove between two pieces of furniture and fell asleep. No one knew where I was for hours. But was this drunk or a kid? Find out at the end of the video. This one was posted by Kyle4HL. Lawyers of Reddit, what's the most ridiculous arguments you've heard in court? Lawyer who's not practicing in court, but when I was in college during my bachelor's degree, criminal law was part of the curriculum and this included spending a couple of days observing criminal trials. The things you witness. Anyway, at the start of one of these trials, a guy with the greasiest mullet enters the room. Thin, tall, disproportionately sized limbs, tattoos all over. I swear the way he sat before the judge, the only thing that was missing was a beer in his hand and a chicken under his arm. Now this guy chose not to have a lawyer represent him, as he's a regular and spends short periods of time in jail or doing community service pretty much every month. Anyway, real problem case, drugs, alcoholism, etc. But still, he comes across as a really sympathetic dude and has a really entertaining way of telling a story while keeping a straight face and not realising how funny he is. He knows he's getting fined and a couple of hours of cutting weeds as community service to keep our Dutch streets nice and tidy, but tries to win the sympathies of the judge to decrease his sentence. This man's dog was sent to a dog shelter when they found it malnourished a couple of weeks before when they brought him in for dealing. Real sad, but also the reason he's standing trial. The guy got high as a kite and drunk as an Irishman on St Patrick's and while completely drugged out of his mind, decided to get his dog back from the shelter because he really missed his girl. The judge asked him if it's correct that he broke the lock and some of the camera equipment on the site of the dog shelter and he confirms. You could really tell from his passionate account of the progression of the evening that he did all this out of pure love as his dog, according to him, was the only thing that pulled him through all of his rough patches with his girlfriend and his drug problem. So the judge orders camera footage to be shown to confirm that it is the suspect and he confirms. On it, he is seen stumbling about and wrenching one of the dog enclosures open and hugging a German shepherd. At this point, everyone is touched by seeing this guy be so emotional on the camera footage with the dog, hugging it, petting it and playing with it. And you can see the judge really get into it as well. Anyway, so this guy continues with his story and tells how he took the dog to his car and went home never feeling happier in his life and ends his account with the driest delivery of... Needless to say, I was fucking surprised when I woke up the next day and there was a German Shepherd in my room instead of a Staffordshire Terrier. Everyone just broke out in laughter. He didn't get what was funny. Turns out the dude stole the wrong dog. Judge sentenced him to 50 hours of community service and 3,000 euros or so repairs for the broken doors and camera equipment. Too long, didn't read. Guy tries to win sympathies of judge with passionate account of how he broke into a dog shelter and steal his dog back from animal services. Steals the wrong dog. Law student, former professor's story. Defendant busted for possession of narcotics. They were in the pocket of his leather jacket. He argues the search was illegal because with his buttery smooth leather jacket, there is no way the officer would have felt the drugs in his pocket during a pat down. So he shouldn't have reached in the pocket to find the drugs in the first place. Judge asks if the jacket is the one he's currently wearing in court. It was. Judge asks to feel this jacket and the pockets. Defendant hands it to the bailiff. Judge finds more drugs in the pocket. Needless to say, it didn't go well for him. I was a juror, but this was a hell of a defence. Defendant ran through a red light and crossed against traffic in front of an officer. She was over twice the limit. It wasn't her fault. She had a cut on her arm that her dog licked. The yeast from the dog's saliva entered her bloodstream and converted the blood sugar into alcohol. 
An opposing attorney the other day said I should not cross-examine his witness at a preliminary hearing because it would only hone the witness's testifying skills to be cross-examined at trial. I laughed out loud. Sounds pretty desperate, doesn't it? Oh geez, where do I start? I mean, I could tell plenty of these about my clients, but I like this one. A lady has an injury compensation case. It's for her upper back and, of course, complex regional pain syndrome. She decides she needs the insurance company to pay for a special mattress for her, like a $6,000 memory foam with heat and massage and a thousand other features. And not just a twin, she needs a California king because, of course, her layabout unemployed boyfriend needs to sleep there too. We spend months litigating this damn thing. Finally, she buys it herself and my client agrees to give her $1,500 just to be done with it. The judge takes myself and opposing counsel aside and says he's going to motherfuck us if we ever say the word mattress in his court again after wasting all this time. It was that ridiculous. Not three months go by and the case comes on for another hearing. After exhausting all the chiropractic care allowed under the law, her doctor was seeking a variance to get some additional chiropractic. We get to court and I'm arguing it should be denied. Judge turns to her and says, Ma'am, why do you feel you need more chiropractic care? She pauses for a minute, then says, I'm having a lot of trouble sleeping on my mattress. I think I saw smoke coming out of his ears. In family court, hearing a motion for entry of a restraining order for an abusive husband, husband's lawyer argues that in a marriage, there is implied consent for a certain amount of abuse slash violence. I have a brief encounter, personal injury prospect. Old lady slipped and fell on an icy driveway which was not salted or maintained, so she wanted to sue for damages. After hearing the story, turns out the lady fell on her own driveway which she did not salt, maintain. She was wanting to sue herself. Had a pro se lignant argue that she didn't owe the credit card company because Jesus. The basic argument was that debt is a sin, or maybe not paying the debt was a sin. And Jesus died for all of our sins. Therefore, Jesus died to pay off our debt. Brilliant. I heard this story from a cop. A man was arrested for charges of assault and rape. This was in Oklahoma and I'm in Texas, so I'm not sure what the offence is called there. Anyway, he was being accused of shoving the woman on the ground where there was some debris and she sustained injuries, hence the assault, and then accused of violently raping her. During court, the injuries were mentioned. The man, representing himself, objects. Allegedly, his exact words were, So how do you know that the injuries were from when I pushed her down and not from when I raped her? From what I heard, the judge's face was priceless. This is a story that my grandpa always tells, so some of the details are fuzzy, but this is the gist of it. My grandpa was a public defender, and this was a defence he used for one of his clients, who was being accused of attempting to break into a car. How it happened, man number one is sitting in his house and he looks out of the window and sees man number two next to a parked car in the street. Man number two is out there fiddling with the car door for like 10 minutes. And so man number one realises he's trying to break into the car and calls the cops. Man number two runs and eventually man number three, my grandpa's client, is picked up nearby because he matched the description of man number two. So my grandpa is meeting with his client and telling him what he is accused of. Client asks, wait, what kind of car was it? Grandpa tells him. Client says, I can prove that it wasn't me. Grandpa, how? Client. You said the guy was out there for 10 minutes. I can break into that car in less than 20 seconds. Grandpa, prove it. So he finds one of whatever kind of car it was and the client proceeds to pick the lock in 12 seconds. Grandpa gets the judge out there and the client does it again for the judge who makes him do it one more time and then dismisses the case. Not a lawyer, but I was in traffic court and a cab driver had got a ticket for running a red. He argued that it was really difficult to see because the sun was rising in the morning, right where the light was. He was travelling west. Not in court, but a conversation in my office. 
It doesn't matter if you were sober or not. You jumped out of a third story window with a beer bottle and threw it at a cop. The jury is going to think you were drunk. Also, I think you were drunk. Not a lawyer, but I do have a story for this. This happened while I was working as a medical assistant. One of our diabetic patients got a speeding ticket while his blood glucose was low, and he seemed to be under the impression that this would be an ironclad excuse to get him out of it. So he calls our office one day and I answer, PT will be the patient. Me, Dr X's office, the Dark Waffle speaking, how may I help you? PT, hello, the Dark Waffle. I need the doctor to write a letter for me. Me, I can definitely help with that. We do this frequently, usually for a jury duty excuse or a note stating they need to bring their medication with them when they travel, etc. What is the letter for? I got a speeding ticket last weekend and I'm going to contest it. I need a letter from the doctor stating that I have diabetes and that it impairs my ability to drive. So it wasn't my fault I was speeding. Me, let me run through this with you. Just so I'm clear what you're asking for. PT, okay. Me, you want a letter stating you have diabetes. Yes. And you want it to say your diabetes impairs your ability to drive. Yes. And you believe telling the judge that your diabetes impairs your ability to drive will get him to throw out the ticket? Yes. I don't think that's a good idea, sir. What? Why? Even if they agree with your argument and toss out the ticket, which I doubt they will, if you tell them that you have a medical condition that impairs your driving ability, I'm pretty sure they'll take your licence away. No, no, see, I'm only impaired when my blood sugar is low. Right, but... This would go on for a few minutes before I told him I'd ask the doctor and see what he thinks. Unsurprisingly, the doctor agreed with me, said he would lose his licence if he did that, so we didn't write the letter, but he still brought this argument to traffic court. The patient is now driven to his appointments by his family members. Made a left turn on a green turn arrow, a city bus ran a red and T-boned me. My car was a little VW rabbit, so it just scooted me and I was perfectly fine. Driver pulls over, comes out and says, the sun was in my eye. I say, I'm not hurt. Thanks for asking. Police arrive and guess what? There was a literal busload full of witnesses. Everyone had the same story. She ran a red. City paid for my car, etc. She denied wrongdoing and went to court, which I had to attend along with a witness or two and the officer. Her defence? She had a migraine. Judge. So I should let you off the hook because you had a bad headache and was driving into the sun. Driver. Yes, your honour. I'm glad you understand. She got her commercial vehicle licence revoked. Should have just taken the point. Actual lawyer here, but this one comes from my time as a law student. As a one-year law student, they send you to go watch a day in a courtroom to see what it's like. One of the things nobody tells you is about how much goes on in courtrooms when motion hearings are going on rather than an outright trial. There's a noted buzz throughout the room, usually of attorneys speaking to their clients about how the process was going to go. I happened upon a domestic violence hearing. When the poor victim took the stand, that buzzing stopped. You could hear a pin drop as she was sworn in and began testifying. Her attorney set the stage for the morning and then asked her, And then what happened? The victim looked right at the judge and said, I made him hit me, your honour. There was an audible gasp. The judge, probably overstepping his bounds a little here, intervened in the questioning to say to her, Ma'am, forgive me, but I feel like this is an important point you need to know. Dear, you can't make anyone hit you, and you didn't make him hit you. The woman, instead of consoled, looked completely baffled. She waited a few beats and then finally said to the judge, I'm pretty sure I did. I mean, I jumped on his back and hit him over the head with a frying pan, after all, your honour. The entire courtroom burst into laughter and the judge conceded that she had, in fact, made him hit her. Have you ever been in court with a flimsy excuse? Tell me your court stories in the comments. Okay, back to r slash drunk or a kid. So who was the person who fell asleep and was lost for a few hours? It was... A kid. About four years old, I was in daycare and when the teachers, caretakers couldn't find me, after some time they called my parents. My parents came and found me almost immediately, dead asleep between two bookcases. 
This is one of the first places they checked because I'd also done this at home. Man, I was hoping this one was a drunk. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed what you've heard, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss any of the daily content from Emma Reads Reddit. See you tomorrow.